All right, so welcome everyone. I'm Rajneesh Gupta and with me, Jemin Patak is here. This is the mock interview series for SOC analyst or security analyst. Okay. Um, I hope you are enjoying this series. Uh, do let us know uh, if you have any feedback. To keep us motivated for every new video, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. And um, yeah, press the bell icon so that you get immediately notified whenever we publish the new video. Okay. So the format is going to be same. I'll be the interviewee. Jamin will be the interviewer. And um, I'll I'll answer the question. And based on my answer, he may ask a couple of uh, counter questions. Okay. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some detailed explanation. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, hi, Jamin. How are you? Hello, Rajneesh. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome. So, guys, uh, let's get started. Uh, today's sure. our uh, questions will be on uh, CI Android. Okay. Uh, so, my first question, Rajnish, is uh, what is the CI Android? Oh, CI Android. Okay. CI Android is basically it's a it's a framework. Okay. Uh, which the abbreviation. Is an abbreviation basically of confidentiality, integrity, mm -hmm. and availability. Okay, so it is used as uh, making policies for by organization. It is used as a scoring organization. It is also used as as a goal as well. So let me tell you this way: confidentiality means uh, preventing any unauthorized access into the network. So. If I want hundred percent confidentiality in my network, I should prevent. I should not have any unauthorized access to data uh, in the network. Okay. Okay. So uh, unauthorized access can happen by hacker, uh, by anybody in the team as well, right? So I should really, I should really avoid such things. So th there are multiple solutions available uh, by which you can do that as well, like having proper access control. Uh, having encryption. So when you have an access control, only authorized people, authorized folks can access certain folders, certain files, certain data in the network, right? Unauthorized people, if they don't have those credentials available or they don't pass the criteria of security, they won't be able to access that, right? So that's 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 avoid any kind of uh, you know uh, incident such as uh, disruption, misuse, uh, data breaches. Uh, you know, modification, anything, any sort of stuff. Okay. When we talk about integrity, it is about the preventing any uh, unauthorized changes in the network. Okay. So confidentiality was about the preventing unauthorized, uh, uh, unauthorized access, but this is about uh, preventing unauthorized changes in the network. So uh, changes as in uh, no uh, person who, those who are authorized, can only change the file, modify the file, uh, add the file, everything, right? So this is about the integrity. So uh, integrity is, uh, is, can be achieved uh, by multiple things. The popular solution is file integrity solution, okay? Where you get notified and uh, only authorized people can able to access those files. And it's also about uh, making sure if the data has been sent from A, uh, there is not we need to ensure that the file is not been changed while reaching it to destination Z. So even if let's say somebody for our regular life, when we download certain file from the internet, we all always get a uh, uh, hash value, right? So that indicates that the file, the actual file is not corrupted or nothing has been modified. So that's why it is called integrity. And in this also the, you know, encryption or certificates, is also very important. So because if the party is trusted, you can be sure that the data is not been corrupted. If you have encryption end to end, uh, there is nobody who can access the data and modify something so that you get a different file or an infected file. So corruption never happened. Okay. So if you are if you achieve hundred percent integrity, that means there is no corruption in the data. Okay. There is no unauthorized changes happening in the data. Final thing is about the availability. So that's that's a uh, that's about uh, uh, having data available all time. Okay, any uh, stopping any unauthorized downtime in the network. It's it's uh, 
I mean, there's no unauthorized downtime, but uh, avoiding any downtime in a in a simple in, in a simple term, I, if I would say. So the impact could happen. It could happen because of ransom cyber attacks like ransomware attack or denial of service attack, or can even be because of power outage, flooding, right? So that is, or maybe a fire. So that could all that is also considered in this. So solution could be. Uh, for cyber attack related incident like ransomware or uh, denial of service attack, the backup is good solution or web application firewall is good solution for uh, DDoS attack. For power failure and everything, it's good to have a disaster recovery or maybe business continuity plan in hand. So that that's 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 the that's the CIA tried. Okay, <clears throat> thank you for the great explanation. Uh, then how did you use CIA Triad? Uh, well, I mean, uh, practically speaking, based on this context, to be really honest, when I was uh, uh, I was in my last project, there have been multiple uh, implementation or engineering work that I've worked with. So uh, if I if I tell you from the confidentiality point of view, uh, again, uh, we need to have access control, right? We need to have security solution that uh, block any unauthorized access. So there are multiple solutions that I work with, including Okta for access control, identity and access management. I even worked with uh, some security solutions as well. I even worked with the McCafe encryption, which is again used for making sure the data is encrypted. Um, while it is in use, while it is in motion, while it is in in you know, uh, is 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 not in use, is stored somewhere. So in all three states, from integrity point of view, if I remember, I worked in uh, certificates, and uh, even there was some file integrity modules that uh, software that I worked with, uh, including one open source tool as a part of proof of concept. So I work with the OSSEC and even I work with Tripwire as well. So that's that's the, the these are the tools that I worked on the integrity. On the availability side, I have worked with few tools uh, uh, which were related to uh, backing up the data. I worked with the web application firewall. Uh, I worked with the Encapsula uh, and now it is, of course, Imperva, Imperva solution uh, for web application firewall so that we can have a better security on denial of service attack so that our website don't go uh, go offline. So, yeah, these are the solutions that I worked in. If I tell you from the, these uh, CIA tried point of view. So, yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. Then uh, my next question is about uh, the, uh -huh. how... Can we use CI tried to create security policies? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, to be very honest, I haven't uh, being a being a security analyst or SOC analyst, I haven't worked a lot in the creating the security policy as such. But I have learned uh, while interacting with my team members how do they create security policy. So I could share you my thought. Uh, about how exactly it is created and how it could be done based on my uh, learning experience as well. So uh, when it comes to security policy, I think ISO 27001 is considered as the best choice. Um, so if we take that as an example and go through the all the three pillars, all the three, all tire, uh, CI triad. So I think um, if let's say we want to create security policy for confidentiality, so we we can uh, we can work on information classification where we can define categories of data specify the their 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 procedure to handle those data as well maybe we can have a public data we can have a confidential data we can have sensitive data so i, I worked in my past uh, with the data classification tool because uh, before you can actually implement any data loss prevention tool yeah i mean in fact I, in fact, forgot to tell you that in confidentiality, we also have a very good tool called data loss prevention tool. So 
uh, in order to implement the DLP solution, data loss prevention, we need to have a data classification first. So that's where we can uh, we can use the policy to classify public data, confidential data, and sensitive data. Now, in the in the we, we in the confidentiality vertical, we can also create policy. Uh, CI tried can also be used to create policy for you know uh, access control, encryption standard. What what kind of a data should be encrypted? Whether data at rest, data in motion, or data in use. So. Yeah, so data in use is like your computer, right? So if the employees is, employees uh, is using their laptop, and so if that data is get encrypted, so that it's considered as data in use. But data is rest is like uh, data is stored in the databases in the storage area, and data in motion is like data going back and forth on the network layer. Uh, so that is the, uh, that's where we can use CI uh, confidentiality in the ISO 27001 uh, for um, creating the I, uh, security policy. For in, if we use the integrity, we can again use the uh, use that to create security policies like change management, uh, audit activity, and uh, for availability, uh, I think the best policy example could be business continuity plan where we can define the procedures right all the procedures are continuous uh, we can ensure that all the data is are data is available all time but for that there are multiple elements involved right for example if there is a drill exercise so everyone should know about all companies basically do the drill exercise so everyone should know about what happened well, i mean what they need to do if the if the server goes offline or if the data center goes offline so the network engineer should know about modifying the dns or firewall engineer should know about fail failover uh, database team should know about what they should really do on those situation so everyone should be knowing about that and uh, the, there should be incident response team who should know about okay what to do now uh, failover activity redundancy replication they can look at the rpo and rto or they, they play with all those value in that case so yeah this is how the ci triad can be used to create security policy then so yeah okay hmm. great well uh yes this is all i have for uh today's questions uh sure all right, so thank you so much, Jamin. Um, now let's uh, this is uh, now let's go to the a little detail explanation. I think I have already. Uh, I'm not sure, but I am having a feeling that I already gave answer in much more detail. Yes, but, you already. Uh, did, yeah. When you give such answer, make sure you make it a little precise. Okay. Um, let me let me share my screen first. All right, perfect. So this is CIA triad. Okay, so this you can consider as the confidentiality. This is our integrity. This is our availability. Okay. This is our availability. Now, uh, uh, confidentiality can be impacted when there is any unauthorized access, disruption, anything sort of. Okay. Uh, uh, whenever, let's say, there's an unauthorized person trying to, as I said earlier, the, the unauthorized person trying to get the access, and as a result, we have a data breaches. So that's how the confident, the score of confidentiality deteriorate. So let me put it in this way: you can take this as a goal. Okay. You can take CIA tried as a goal. So let's say company A is. Uh, you know, you can say that company ABC, there is a company ABC, their score can be calculated by based on CIA, right? How? They, you can say in, on the conf in the confidentiality level, the company is 9 out of 10. And the integrity, the company is 5 out of 10. The, in the availability, the company is uh, uh, 7 out of 10. How it is calculated? So this is the score of the company. They can do it by their internal audit or the external audit as well. So 
uh, it could also be calculated based on the past incident let's say last year they had a data breach so that shows that they are not their confidentiality score is not so good right so they have to implement new security controls to uh, bring it up so to make it consistent to make it uh, at least reasonable value up to some reasonable value which is could be 9 9.5 9.9 .9. Nobody can be 100% or 10 out of 10 every time, but you have to keep trying, right? So this, I personally say this to everyone that I teach. Uh, see, I tried, you should treat it like a goal. You should treat it like a score. So uh, if let's say your confidentiality score is low, okay? It might be because you, you don't have, you had some incident in the past. So now you or you you don't have any incident. You don't have any incident in the past, but you don't even have any controls. So you have to think about implementing new security solution. So you come up with the hypothesis that this is how the confidentiality can be impacted. And because you are in the critical business, the regulatory business, uh, you know, uh, you know, important business, mission critical business, you should take this as the topmost priority. So to tackle this confidentiality, you can implement access control, you know, so that only authorized people can access the data. You can implement encryption. Okay. You can, you can start encrypting the data so that nobody else, the man in the middle attack is not possible. So if I'm talking to you, then nobody else can really see what is going back and forth. So this is possible by, let's say, moving all the HTTP data, HTTP based website to HTTPS, so, right? So now um, the communication between me and the website is all encrypted. So nobody else can see that. What happened in the WhatsApp, right? Uh, now all the data is encrypted. So not anybody, uh, anybody else in between cannot see that. Or even if they captured the data, maybe by sniffing, uh, the, you know, sniffing the data from the Wi-Fi or somewhere, it's all gibberish. So it's all be invalid data. Uh, for the integrity side, it's like, uh, it's like uh, unauthorized modification of the data, right? So uh, this, is, uh, this is like can be implemented by using file integrity monitoring or can also be because of the certificate, right? Certificate uh, that you apply by or encryption as well. Again, encryption can also be useful as well here because if you if you don't allow any unauthorized if you have encryption so you don't allow any you don't allow anybody to see the data or access the data as a result you uh, don't allow them to modify the data as well right file integrity monitoring is about uh, looking at any changes happening into the system and it's more like a detection but you can also apply some uh, prevention rules as well that you stop them from accessing the data you get the visibility at the end but yeah finally availability so you need to make sure your data is available all the time right so uh, the availability can be impacted because of ransomware attack ransomware or a denial of service attack power outage yeah i know it's not seem like a cyber attack but yeah when you talk about CIA tried, everything has to be considered. And the in the center of it is data. So all you need to think about is your data because your data is actually your crown jewel. This is your crown jewel, right? Your 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 customer information, your trade secret, your patent. This is all your data, right? Power outage or uh, fire issue and everything. So to overcome from the ransomware attack, I think the uh, backup is the first thing that you should think about or antivirus solution, good antivirus solution. To take care of the denial of service attack, to address this issue, you have to think about a good WAF solution. As I said earlier, I, work, I said in the interview as well, uh, I work with Encapsula and Power. Power outage and fire is something which we have to deal with the sprinkler and multiple other stuff related to data center uh, maintenance and management as well. Okay. So I hope this was useful. Um, uh, let us know what you think about this interview, uh, this, this entire uh, video. Uh, we would love to hear your feedback. Till then, keep learning. Enjoy.